Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Die by the Sword podcast. I'm Gary. And I'm Philip. And we are here live at the Dallas Fan Expo. We've been here for the past three days meeting some new followers, new subscribers. And if you played our little game and won yourself a set of dice or a shiny new D20, congratulations and welcome. Or if you are one of the even luckier ones that won something from our merch store, congratulations on that as well. Before we get into this week's episode, as always, we want to do our shout-outs for the week. We'll start off with Sword Coast Soundscapes. If you want to check out more of their ambient sounds, you can check them out at youtube.com slash Soundscapes. And for that great spooky music, check out Midnight Syndicate. You can find them at midnightsyndicate.com. And you can also give us a follow on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or X, whatever you want to call it. We even have a subreddit page as well. So if you are a Reddit user and want to follow us there, you can check us out at DBTS Pod. And you can also always reach out to us at Die by the Sword Podcast at gmail.com for any questions or concerns or comments or suggestions or hey, just to say hi. Anything else you got for this week's intro? I don't. Let's get into it. All right. Let's get into this week's episode. Before we get into this week's episode, we've got a quick word from our sponsor. Fellas, blink if you haven't purchased a Father's Day gift yet. Yeah, we thought so. Today's episode is brought to you by Manscaped, the leaders in below-the-waist grooming. Maybe your pops has had a bush since the 70s, and that's okay. Our friends at Manscaped have crafted the total package for his special day. Whether it's for the boys downstairs, his beard, or even the best pair of underwear out there. Manscaped has his bases covered. Head over to manscaped.com and get 20% off plus free shipping with code DBTS. From daddy to zaddy. Trust Manscaped. As a dad myself, I know I haven't always been the best at upgrading my grooming tools, Up until recently, I may have even been using my dad's old electric shaver that I think he got in the 70s. For this Father's Day, show your dad some love by giving him the tools he needs to look and feel his best. Get him the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. It's the complete beard maintenance kit for all those bearded kings out there. This all-in-one kit comes with a Beard Hedger, Manscaped's most advanced beard trimmer as well as shampoo, conditioner, oil, and balm for his beard. It also comes with a brush, comb, and scissors so he can style his beard and mustache like the true gentleman he is. And of course, no beard kit would be complete without Manscaped's Handyman Face Shaver. Perfect for those who want that smooth finish. And unlike my dad's shaver from the 70s, This one is compact enough to fit in any travel case, so make sure he takes it with him on his next big trip. Oh, and if he carries a lot of body hair like most dads do, you're in luck with the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra. This guy is designed with fathers in mind, featuring the signature Lawnmower 5.0. Oh, and that set of underwear that he got for Christmas about a decade ago, I think it definitely needs some upgrading. And what better way than with Manscaped's Boxers 2.0? The Boxers 2.0 were designed with a simple mission. To make the most comfortable boxers a man could buy. It starts with the Jewel Pouch. A dedicated space that cradles your stones in place with a perforated performance fabric for extra breathability. So head on over to Manscaped.com and get 20% off plus free shipping with the code DBTS. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. And use the code DBTS. Never forget where you came from, if you know what I mean. Happy Father's Day from Manscaped.
Hello. Hello, hey. Hello there. It's been so long. And we got so far. <laughs> <laughs> but in the and end. Nothing has changed. Has it? <laughs> it doesn't even matter. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah. So how are you guys? Fantastic. Super. True. I'm hanging in there. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Allergy season is kicking my butt. That's uh, that, that's, that's for cool. sure. Sadly, I don't have that very many allergies, but I'm feeling it a little. Eyes be itching, nose be running. <laughs> yep. A little tickle in the throat. And I'm like, uh-huh. yeah. yeah, so that's definitely no fun. But enough about us. How are you, Gary? <laughs> mm-hmm. What's outside like? <laughs> <laughs> There's this uh, thing there called the sun. It warms you up. It's really uh-huh. nice. And it went away last week. It did. I, I was outside briefly for that. Uh, and, you know, I did see the, the four minutes of the total solar eclipse, which was one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. That was yeah. pretty, pretty awesome. It was okay. It was good. I, I mean, even though we had clouds, uh, you could still see pretty well. So it was actually pretty good. Well, I overhear the clouds parted just in time to see the eclipse. Yeah, that was the craziest thing. Same here. <laughs> Not same here. It, it was like filtered through the clouds. Uh, you could see it, um, but it was definitely, I didn't get like a good view. Mm. Yeah. And I was just joking. I was downplaying it. Like yeah. I thought it would be cool, but it was like, I, I wasn't prepared for exactly how cool it was actually going to be to see that with my own eyes. Yeah, I, w- was, I was with you. Yeah. 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 It was definitely one of the cooler things I've ever seen. I, I mean, yeah. I've, I've seen partial solar eclipses, which are cool because it gets darker and, you know, and you can right. get glasses and see it. I'm like, okay, this is cool. But the total solar eclipse, it gets like nighttime. And yeah. Now it I gets, get what people were going crazy for. Yeah. It gets yeah, drastically the, cooler. Yeah. And I had geckos coming out. They were coming yeah. out and the dogs were going crazy because they're like, oh, great. What are these? They're coming mm-hmm. out there. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was cool. It was really cool. I don't know that it was like burst into tears cool, but it was definitely up there. So like I was uh, over at a friend's and like we all, you know, put on the glasses, but we were also like listening to like news reports or whatever. Because like as like the eclipse was like moving through the regions, like you know, people would like stop and cheer once totality had been reached. But then, like, there were news reporters who just like were like full on sobbing. It like during their like news report, and I was like, it was cool, but it was not like bring me to my knees, like make me like start crying over over this. It was definitely yeah. one of the cooler experiences, though. Ten out of ten would definitely recommend. Yeah, did not cry, but was pretty excited <laughs> by it. All right, I the funny part was I live about you know, probably half a mile from an elementary school and they apparently were all out in the the yard out there watching it as soon as that total e- eclipse happened it's just screams from all these children that you could hear <laughs> i i work in a downtown area and there's a little square there um a whole bunch of people got it. same thing was not expecting expecting that i didn't even know that was going on i <laughs> It was, it was pretty cool, but I wish less clouds, yeah. four and a half stars. <laughs> <laughs> yes, totally. Yeah, I've got a, a family chat with like my brother-in-law, my sister, my mom. So I, I sent pictures of the eclipse and that and like, oh, that was really cool. My brother-in-law lives in Houston and sent back. Yeah. One of the coolest experiences in my life. And it was just pictures of clouds. Oh, yeah, yeah. They couldn't see the eclipse yeah. at all because the cloud cover was so thick. Yeah, yeah Mark's family, family, same way. Mark's family did the same, so oh well. So, but luckily enough, we got to see it up here, which was cool. And that but was now I cool. feel like I'm a, a converted fanatic, and so like I would tell other people, like, oh my god, it was so awesome, and then yeah. I feel like they're going to look at me like I looked at those people like, it was, oh, I bet it's probably fine. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it was... I wasn't expecting it to be that cool. And it was also nice because that was my first day after my knee surgery to be outside of the house in general. So that was nice. What a day. That's a... <laughs> I know. 
got to go sit in the front yard for a little bit and then go back inside and back to my post on the couch. Heck yeah. I'm so tired of my couch. <laughs> the couch is fine. I'm just tired of sitting there. Do you have binoculars and you're spying on your neighbors now? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. This is exactly like the setup to like, what is it? The guy in the mirror across the, uh, the street or whatever that story is. Yeah. Rear yeah. Window. Rear yeah, window. Yeah. That's what it's called. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Or the Simpsons That's version. That's the one I think of all the time. <laughs> exactly. Is it? I think of the I think of the the Christian Bell, uh, oh, yeah. little Netflix TV series uh, <laughs> where it just like uh, it was super camp. It was just incredibly hilarious the entire time. Kind of making fun of the whole thing. I haven't watched it yet, but I I know of that one. But anyway, let's kick off the campaign. <laughs> yeah, new book. <laughs> You're starting book five. How exciting oh, wait. is that? Is that what we're doing? I guys, I thought we beat Pathfinder. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not prepared. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you're not beating Pathfinder at level eleven. <laughs> oh damn! Wait, so you're telling me we didn't find the path? Like, <laughs> pretty yeah, sure, right. Pretty sure. You're still trying to find it. Dang. I'm oh, pretty sure. sure. <laughs> uh, this crew couldn't find their asses. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we're looking for other asses. <laughs> Look what you do outside the game. And I'm just <laughs> Hello. Uh, but yeah, so last time we got together, we just did a recap of book four. Uh, went through some of our favorite moments through that, which was fun. Uh, realizing how long book four actually was. It was a lot of episodes. But before that, who who remembers how we wrapped up book four? By beating the big bad boss. Yeah. Meeting a bird friend? You did meet a bird friend. We did meet a bird friend. And booking it out of the caves like the end of Spaceballs when it's about to blow up. <laughs> and the underwater thing heading back to the sub. Mm-hmm. And then the, nothing back to the boat. I don't look. I, did did we make it back on the boat? Uh, I think we ended up with you on the boat. You hadn't made it back yet. Uh, but like, yeah. on the boat, don't run. Yeah, get in the boat. <laughs> yes, we're on the boat, but we still have the issue, and it's still out there. Is the whispering way? Yes. Oh yeah, and we found a bunch of stuff. Right, we, we yeah. found uh, Philip. What were what were the items that you picked up? I remember there being like two distinct items related to all of oh, this. Oh yeah. Um, I I got a new weapon. I I got the um, the raven's head thingy. Yeah, like the the mace that has like raven's beaks coming out of it, which right? is a key component of the um, the reformation of the carrion crown. So yeah. mm-hmm. we've got that, and we've got the heart. From the wolf book. And Mm -hmm. we also have something else that's important. This the the octopus statue, the sea sage effigy. You got it. So we could make our own carrying crown. Wait, no, we're missing something. Are we missing something? Uh there's a few more components for the, the whole thing. Um but yes, <coughs> you, you do have all of that stuff. Uh, I mean, this party makeup, no one really knows what the Sea Sage Effigy is or what it's what it for or how it relates to the story. Well, I'm, I'm I like it. Back to <laughs> I like it because it reminds me of Nathaniel. Ah, yeah. Oh, Nathaniel. Uh, you're just going to keep it, not give it back to the University of Leverstad. <laughs> That and the the Raven's Head thing. I don't want the heart. I have no use for a heart. (laughs) But you could make Captain Planet. (laughs) True. He's our hero. True. (laughs) Um, But we also got, so we got a diamond. Um, And diamonds are 
part of the spell. My girl's best friend. That's well, what I was going to, yeah. <laughs> so it's Jenny's. Uh, no, <laughs> it's part of the spell of resurrection. So if one of us dies, we don't have to reroll a character. Oh, yay. But we have to find Except something to, to cast it yeah, and all that someone stuff. Someone can cast resurrection. Yeah. I don't remember what level spell that is. For well, parents. I can't cast resurrection. I don't think. But it's possible. Um, we also got a belt of giant strength that Jenny stole, but if somebody else wants it, we can roll for it. Uh, a suit of armor that's the Shadow Mist Mail. Plus one Shadow Mist Mail. So it's. Is that is that from the book? Is it book specific armor? Yes. So, uh, so Shadow. It's, it's the combination of the shadow and mist mail. They're two separate things, but they've been put together into this one armor. So it's mist mail that has the shadow quality added to it. It's like the Reese's peanut butter cups of armor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you got shadow in my mist mail. <laughs> oh no. Um, I think that's it. A bone scroll case. Was there anything in the bone scroll case? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wasn't there... Was it like a letter or... Yes, that was um, the note that uh, you should all have in your right. journals, I believe. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Like, Hero Lab has like a, a journal function, right? Wait, uh, was it here? Oh, no, it was in... Uh, it was, yeah, roll 20. That's right, that's right. Yeah, Whispering Way that. Letter Dark Rider. Yes. Um, yeah. And then nobody wanted the sickle of wounding, so we'll probably sell that. And we got Whisper Amulet. I, we're collecting those things like Pokemon cards. Yeah. <laughs> Can't Everybody throw a rock without amulet? hitting a Whisper Amulet. <laughs> <laughs> You throw one whisper amulet, it runs it, it lands on another one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. It's just like collecting marbles. I mean, isn't that essentially what they are? A little okay. egg with a no skull in it? Yeah. Fabergé eggs. Uh, so, yeah. So, you've collected a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you do have that letter from. Uh, from AA. AA. Uh, <laughs> Alcoholics and Moments. Yeah. <clears throat> so you learned that he's an alcoholic. <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, main thing to learn from that is that uh, they're expected to take the Sea Sage effigy to Caliphas. So you know that is where you are headed. To Caliphas. To Caliphas. So to get this one started, we zoom in on the streets of Caliphas. The sun has set, the moon rises high in the sky, the nocturnal portion of the population of Caliphas begins to stir. We cut to a dark, candlelit apartment. The apartment is lavishly decorated. Relics from centuries past are displayed on shelves. On the table, we see what appear to be case files. On each file is a sketch of the person the file is about. From the kitchen, we see a humanoid man with long red hair pulled back into a ponytail approach the table. He is dressed to the nines, but looks like he's from the wrong century. A wine glass containing a thick red liquid in his hand. He sets the wine glass down on the table and looks through the files. As he opens them, we see on each the word deceased we hear a knock at the door the man goes to open it and we see another man younger more casually dressed with ratty long black hair the man at the door flashes a wry smile and we see two fangs for incisors mac the young man says good to see you made it through the night we've had another murder last night mac steps aside as the young man enters holding another case file. It was Giada. 
What? No, not, not Giada. Who would want to hurt her? She was the most well-liked on the council. I know. Someone is killing vampires. They must have a reason. We need to figure out who this monster is. We have determined that it is another vampire, but we're unsure of who or how. How, how is this vampire able to circumvent their bond to their sire and kill their own kind? Mac goes back to the files and opens them on the table. He's intently searching through the files to piece together the clues. Perhaps witchcraft is involved, the young man says as he pulls a vial from his pocket. He drinks the elixir. A look of euphoria crosses his face. <laughs> witchcraft, that would be something. The only witches that I know who would be crazy enough to work with a vampire serial killer are, th are those two sisters up in- Ugh! We see a sword plunge through Mac's chest, and the unlife begins to drain from his body. Mac collapses on the floor as the young man grins, bloody sword in hand. He picks up Mac's body and places it on the table. Steps outside the door and gathers the bag he left there before. In the bag, we see tubes and vials that he sets up to drain the blood from Mac's body. After every last drop is drained, the young vampire collects the blood and his tools in the bag. He throws Mac's body over his shoulder and carries him out. He takes Mac's body to an empty town square, just before sunrise. He lays out the body ceremoniously and plants a sharpened wooden stake in Mac's chest and leaves. As the morning sun rises, Mac's body ignites, leaving behind a humanoid-shaped pile of ash. As we begin Book 5, Ashes at Dawn. Oh, Intrigue. Definitely interesting. I believe that sets the scene of what Book 5 might be about. Witches versus Vampires. Which is, which is working with vampires. Which is are the vampires. Uh. <laughs> Guess we'll find out. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so you guys have made it back uh, off of the subaqueous research vessel. Uh, made it back onto the ship. This horse crew and greets you. Is horse mad about the things and dents? Uh, he, I mean, he's an eccentric man, so I'm sure he'll get over it. It's more for him <laughs> to fix. He likes fixing things. Uh, in fact, it says, well, what took you guys so long? We, I needed more spells, so we slept down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that does make sense. I can see how that makes sense. What was, what was it, like four days that you were down there? <laughs> That, that actually sounds about right. <laughs> so it felt like longer. <laughs> yeah. But the most important thing is that we killed it. What was it? The mission and a monster. Oh. So there there, there was something down there. Well, oh, yeah. it was. And then it was trying to bring something else from another plane. Was that the crazy light show that I was seeing up here? Yes. I'm going to say yeah. Huh. Interesting. He pulls out a little journal and starts jotting down everything. Tell me more. <laughs> we tell him all about the, the hoofed monster with the tentacles. Also, um, he didn't even ask about a friend. There's the same in amount our, of people. Missing friend. Yeah. Yeah, there's but the same amount of people, so nothing to him, nothing's <laughs> changed. <laughs> <laughs> That's rough. He doesn't know us that well, so I could see. Well, I mean, we 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 brought Ogres, the Tangu. They look the same. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say we he was a body. druid, so he yeah, a he was a druid, so he just shape shifted into a crow guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, you never know. <laughs> and he's stuck. No, but we did bring the body, right? 
I would assume did... you did. Oh, I thought we would. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably so. Whip, did you bring him? <laughs> as long as there's absolutely no follow up questions, <laughs> yes, yes, I did. <laughs> And then we have to borrow it again to go get the body. Cause, <laughs> oops. Uh, at this point, I don't know if it would still be there. <laughs> but the dome's collapsing. Well, I, I heard him say in passing he wanted a burial at sea, so. <laughs> one of those sea druids. <laughs> he liked his fish. But yeah, I do feel like we would have brought it. I mean, there's no, there's literally no way. Like, I'm pretty sure. I, I thought it was Diego who brought it. Because I think sure. Diego has the has the most... Like carrying capacity and strength of all of us. Anyway, uh, let's just true. all agree we brought the body. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we brought Gruber's body all the way back. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's stop down and spend the next twenty minutes deciding <laughs> 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 and the logistics of how. <laughs> right. How did you do this? Now, did you bring the body, or did you bring the body and the head? <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Since Keith's character is like you know, being either decapitated or cut in half. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, it's true. Yes, when they come in twos, you think of Keith. Yes. Hey, when I die, I die good. You know what I mean? <laughs> Nothing true. but the best for my dying characters. <laughs> <laughs> Epic deaths. <laughs> uh, so, yes. So, the main problem you have now is you have a mammoth here on the, the ship with you and his uh, companion. Who's role playing the Ooh. mammoth? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's crying. It just it's upset. Takes it his head and his trunk like in Shakespeare and just looks looks him in the eye and mammoths don't cry, but if they could, this one would. Uh. And, yeah. and like maybe like the mammoth like takes the like picks up Krubert's body and just like walks off with it and is like off the boat. No, like no, no like you know when when we get back to land, like it's gonna walk off back into the the you know into nature with with Krubert's body. It's like I know what's best for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that is something we do have to find out about: is the mammoth and, and what are we gonna do with him? Yeah, Horace will say. From what I understand with druids and animal companions, this this fine beast will find another companion. Uh, yeah, I, I, he could stay with me. There's a druid order nearby. I can take him to the druids there for him to find a new host. Well, and he just says, like, licking on. his chops. <laughs> <laughs> This this mammoth just like moves on so quickly. It's like, oh, okay, Grubert's dead. Bye. Let me just go find a new one. <laughs> I'm Moving free. On. He just drop kicks Grubert's body off the boat. And says, I'm out. <laughs> Should have done better, Grubert. No. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to just glide past this whole thing just because of the. Uh, I don't want to get so sad for the mammoth that. You know, I feel worse for the mammoth than I do for Gruber. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sorry, Gruber. Uh, sucker for him. So the question is: Is do we leave immediately for Califas? Uh, you know what? I think we deserve a break. Not like a vacation, but maybe do a little shop. I mean, take do a little shopping. Take uh, take note of what. All we got, we we've got. We know that the Dark Rider is dead. We know they can't do anything without the stuff that we have in our possession. So, this is what one of the one times I'm going to say. Let's take it a little slower, so that we. Can I don't know about prepared. you, but I could definitely use a drink. <laughs> Yaniko just like. Walks in the middle. He's like, where the hell are we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there's that. Um, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. We're going to Ilmarsh. <laughs> he does, no, that's not where we're going. I think he asked where, where we're at. 
Yeah, because he got stuck through the portal. He has no idea. Well, let's let's go to the inn, even though I don't like them very much. Let's go to the inn, and uh, we'll we'll fill you in. We'll fill you in. Okay. We'll inform the NQ or that uh, Nico is going to take over Gruber's room. So, after the fostering, um, what does the town look like? I mean, did we kill their um, cash cow because of all the fish they were catching? Or are they grateful because we freed them from that pact? Well, and do they even know yet? That's, that's a good question. Probably don't know yet. Yeah, they, they probably don't know yet. Uh, they would... Depending on how long you spend in town, they would eventually, you know, figure out something. Um, that I mean, the the big rift opening through space uh, wasn't just something y'all saw down in the the caves underneath. It was kind of seen all throughout here, so they know something happened, something big. Um, there are no more reports of seeing the Watcher in the Bay. Uh, and, you know, the big creature that was out there because you've destroyed it uh, in town you do notice that while the townsfolk aren't like against you or like they don't hate you they just kind of when you approach they will just kind of go inside and close their doors ah damn I was picturing that we we're going to have like at the end of Ghostbusters we'd be like the Ghostbusters <laughs> But these, this is these, not that. They're they're not sure what to make of this whole new situation. We're more like the Ghostbusters between a, a part one That's, and two. <laughs> yeah. We have to do birthday parties. <laughs> well, I don't think we should push it on with them, so... Yeah, but we also... Yeah, so I think, yeah, we should go to the to the tavern at the inn, have some drinks, and then... We need a. Uh, we can find out about our new friend, which is exactly what we did with Grubert. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. <laughs> like one episode ago, and he's already gone. <laughs> oh man! Oh no! This could be brief. <laughs> All right. So you guys head to the tavern. Uh, the you know the hostess there. Um, Greet you, and not in the most polite way, but it's kind of typical for how everyone... Uh, customer service in Ilmarsh is not a, really a thing, except for the, the girl at the, the souvenir shop, but she's not from Ilmarsh originally. So, like, how many of you? Just, uh, five? Animals have to stay outside. Yes, my friend. We we will keep the animals outside, but there are five of us. I think she was talking. She's talking you. about you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is speciesism. Do you have a bird uh, and a cat? Big a treat. <laughs> no, he was in there before. He can come in. <laughs> like, don't worry. They're not going to chase each other. <laughs> <laughs> I see you brought your own snacks for the cat book. <laughs> Uh, what can I get you? Ale, please. Yeah, Ale, seriously, just uh, just something strong. Yeah. Wait, it's, it's been a day. Okay. I'm curious. Uh, what? Um. Uh, oh God, I forgot his name. Frogman. Nico. I'm sorry. Oh. Pork chop. Chop. Pork chop. Thank you. I couldn't think of what kind of meat it was. Um. <laughs> Ribeye. Brisket. No, that's not brisket. It. Come here, brisket. <laughs> Chicken tender. No, wait. <laughs> that's a new guy. Um, I'm curious. Filet fish. <laughs> I'm curious to find out what he orders at the tavern. <laughs> Pond scum. Uh, <laughs> Glass of milk. <laughs> no, I'm sure uh, pork chop will order meat along with everyone else. Got a mead, got an ale, and got a dwarven whiskey. I'll have a dwarven whiskey too. Dwarven whiskey. I'll also take the whiskey. Uh, 
dwarven whiskey. All right, I'll have those right out. Uh, two silver pieces. Boom. Slide them on the table. <laughs> you say, Daddy's got it, and then there's like slap the money on the table. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just pocket lint. <laughs> uh, all right, so she goes and grabs those. So in the heat of battle, I didn't really catch your name. I'm uh, I'm glad you asked. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, Genoveva. Oh, damn. I, love, I forgot what it was. Genoveva, I'm Genoveva Natasia Ursula de Cascabel, but everyone calls me Jenny. Wow, that's a really long name. <laughs> to her face, at least. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I am I'm Yaniko. Yaniko. Yaniko, how did you or where is it that you're actually from and how did you fall through that portal? That's a great question. Um I'm from Absalom and I was just in the library doing research and then all of a sudden I was with you guys. <laughs> what uh what were you researching? I was I was researching the whispering tyrant. The Whispering Tyrant, why were you res- researching that? Because mm. a lot of people are trying to stop him. And I want the glory of being the first one to do it. Orale. I'm one of those people, too. Ooh. Wait, do you have a Whispering Tyrant, or are we talking about the same person? There's yeah, only think- one Whispering Tyrant. <laughs> there can be only one, like Highlander? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you'll probably have a lot higher chance if you stick with us. That's uh, that's pretty much our, our mission at this point. Well, people don't seem to like you here. They don't have seem to like me around? most places. Mm. They, uh, they aren't too friendly around here. Yeah, unfortunately, this town had a rather unseemly deal with the uh, people who were working with the with uh, whispering way mm, the whispering way interesting well i mean were they working with the whispering way they were just oh it's so gross i don't i don't even want to talk about it but anyway they were called the neighbors and they would like give their daughters to them and they would turn them into these mutant fish people just so that the people here could have more fish you know to pull in from the lake. That seems messed up. It's so fucked. It is very bad. But but why do they why are they mad at you if you help them? Because they don't think that was help. They thought they had a good thing going. Mm, you took their fishes away. Well, we've also saved their children. They don't have to marry mm. them off. Mm, but well, apparently they like fish more than their children. That's what I said. I like this bird. <laughs> <laughs> Direct to the point, I like him. Little fist bump, or what? Feather bump, feather bump, yeah. Wing bump. <laughs> so, do you have arms and wings? I, I don't. No, I, I. He looks human, but he does have feathers. So he has hands, but or he has claws, talons. So yeah. you can't fly. Mm-mm, I can't. <laughs> that's actually oh. a point, a sore point for him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> No. Uh, there are feats for it, but I didn't choose them, so yes, I can't fly. Wait, there were feats for flying, and you didn't choose them? <laughs> no. Look, I played you'll, a see, char- you'll see why. I played a oh. character that could fly, and every time I flew, I'd hit the ceiling. So, I don't know <laughs> if flying is the best. <laughs> it's because you're always trying to fly indoors. <laughs> uh. Isn't it funny that all the time it's needed is when you're trying to be indoors? Mm-hmm. When you need to fly? <laughs> Almost as if the GM is purposely putting you in indoor uh, locations. Yeah. Oh, they can fly. No outdoor locations. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have wings, though. Um. Yeah. There. I do have them, but no, I just. I just can't like, fly. Like sort of like humanoid arm wings. Where it's yeah. Like, that's exactly ooh. what it is. Yeah. Oh, so they're the same thing as your hands, your arms. Right. Yeah. It's like the Tengu from the Power Rangers movie. <laughs> I love that movie. What a great movie. Is that where they got the name? Oh yeah, Tengu is like a like a proper term, like a real world 
term. Yeah, it's uh, it's an it's in the Asian culture. I was okay. reading about it. Yeah, he yeah. calls it something else. I know. Yeah. So I thought that they made that up for this. Okay. Mm-hmm. So they can't get sued. Smart thinking. So so what is y'all's guys' mission? Well, I told you mine is to stop the whispering way. Um, Blip and Porkchop, they're pretty new to me. I don't know. What, have we ever talked about what your deal was? I mean, I'm pork chop. <laughs> I am actively trying to convert Thwip <laughs> <laughs> into being a better person than he currently is uh, to to be the best version of, of him that he could possibly be. And so I'm I'm sort of here to to guide Thwip along his spiritual and moral path journey. Rather, it's it's a it's a very winding journey at the moment, but you know, every step is a step forward. <laughs> And I'm just here trying to do my thing and have a good time with this little guy. It's just uh, always harping at me. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I got caught up with these guys and they seem like a, you know, some interesting people to hang around with. They, they saved my life a little bit and, uh, just trying to return the favor and, and hunt down this whispering way. They, they saved your life a little bit. I was about to, you know, flex and bust out of this, uh, trap that I was in, but, uh, you know, they came along just in time. I see. But I had totally had it under control. Like I said, flex bust out. This going to be my next move. Porked up whispers. He does this all the time. <laughs> just take his word with a grain of salt. <laughs> yeah, Nico just kind of nods like, oh, okay, got it. <laughs> it's easier if you just, yeah, it's easier if you just agree with him and just, mm. just roll with whatever the story he's, he's spinning for you. <laughs> Yeah, with that physique, you could definitely have busted out. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever been with a bird person, Thwip? <laughs> Do you want to? <laughs> and with that, Diego will take a drink take a sip of his drink and look at Nico and say, well, my friend, unfortunately my sister is tied up with this whispering way. I need to either rescue her or stop her. One of the two. Hmm. Family troubles. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Nico's here for like the spicy hot tea that like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tengu people are just all about like, Secrets and and tea and all sorts of stuff. So anything you could tell him secretly, he loves it. If there was a housewives of Ustalov, he would be addicted. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> He's in the shadows everywhere, learning everything. Pork chop uh, pipes up and, and asks, "Like Nico, so you're telling us that you were in a library and you're studying up on how to defeat the Whispering Tyrant? Did you happen to learn anything, or?" I've just learned learned some stuff about him. I'm trying to figure out what his weaknesses are. But there there's not a lot of literature on how to defeat him. It's a really immersive book. He has to learn from doing it. So actually in Jenny's backstory, she had a book about the Whispering Way, but it got lost. Um so she's read up a little bit too on how to defeat or how he was defeated in the uh before times. Sweet. It wasn't easy. Loki Porkchop would love to hear the backstory of this. I would love to tell you, but I've already <laughs> forgotten all of it. <laughs> <laughs> Can we roll and have the GM tell the story? Of the Whispering Tyrant? <laughs> yeah. I know that it happened in the middle of this lake. That's all I remember. I mean, if you want to do a knowledge history, I can give you some of the history of, of him. Ooh, re-rolling. Wasn't prepared for that. Thirteen. Thirteen. And I read the book. So I'll give you like a plus four to that. Seventeen. Mm-hmm. Anybody else get knowledge history to aid that? Uh, let me try. I have a plus six. Uh, 
Well, that didn't work. What'd eight. you get? Eight. Two. <laughs> oh, two. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't aid. Uh, so I'll give you the uh, the Cliff Notes version then with the seventeen. Uh, so the Whispering Tyrant, uh, who was known as Tar Buffon, was a powerful wizard king who ruled Central Avistan at the end of the ninth century. Uh, he was killed by the god Aerodin himself in 896 AR. Uh, and then he rose as the lich known as the Whispering Tyrant in 3203 AR. He ruled the country of Ustalov for centuries. He was finally defeated by the Shining Crusade in 3827 and was imprisoned within his capital of Gallowspire for nearly 300 years. So you know that he was defeated in the Shining Crusade in 3827 and was imprisoned within the capital of Gallowspire. The what of Gallowspire? The, the, his capital. Uh, Gallowspire is a town. In, uh, or Gallowspire is uh, in Ustalov. Oh. It's a fortress. Well, it's a good thing I forgot everything I read. <laughs> so I guess we're sitting there talking about it and I'm like just trying to share information and uh so well it doesn't seem like you know very much about him. I lost my just the cliff notes. Yeah. <laughs> I I wish I had yeah, I lost it in a cave river. I used to read wow. that thing all the time, but I got knocked around in the head so much that I forgot, I guess. Yeah, you, you do look like your sanity's taken a hit before. <laughs> oh, wait. Um, <laughs> he said, you're looking rough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but Thwip, is Thwip still emo Thwip? No. Okay. Uh, he, Thwip That's too bad. <laughs> I mean, he probably still has a little bit of the, like, feeling from it, but, like, yeah, I've recovered my my sanity points. Yeah. So I don't think you're all the way back up and fully, you know, healed up on the sanity, but you are at least not insane anymore. Yeah. So have we got our drinks yet? Is this guy taking a really long time? Or... <laughs> yeah. It's getting awkward. <laughs> standing there awkwardly in the corner. like, I was just going to wait for you to finish talking. And bring him over. <laughs> right. I didn't, I didn't want to interrupt or whatever. Right. Oh, this is one of those, uh, you know, serve yourself bars. You, know, you pay me and then you just go fill it yourself. Right. <laughs> Huh. That takes a lot of trust. <laughs> I respect that. She puts a bottle in her, her bag. Two silver pieces. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even let me do a sleight of hand. <laughs> Two silver pieces. <laughs> <laughs> she just throws them on the table. Take your stuff and go. <laughs> well, but Nico, my friend, you Nico, please tell us more about you. So I'm from Absalom and I had a market there and uh, born in the streets, but uh, I've made it pretty good. And now I'm just adventuring, trying to find some glory. Wait, Show but... them that not every Tengu is a thief and a and a cast down. Well, certainly if we stop the Whispering Way, you can help that, and that will definitely help increase your visibility. That's what I was planning on. <laughs> wait, wait, aren't you from Absalom or something like that? Actually, yes. Do you remember it all? Did you grow up in the streets too? <laughs> oh, good lord, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Small world. I mean, he could have stolen from your parents. You don't even know. <laughs> no doubt he has. <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> so from being from Absalom, are you worshippers of Abadar? Mm, not really. Pork chop is like you better not all this work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, he looks at he looks at Porchop. And he's like, hey, looking at you, you're you're really into your faith, huh? Uh, Porkchop says, well, you know, uh, uh, I try not to to speak too much about it because I don't necessarily want to uh, um, be pushy about my religion. Uh, but yes, I, I believe deeply in Saren Ray and, uh, and and her her goodness uh, that she brings to the world. Hmm. Maybe you can tell and me more like about me it. To, if you'd like me to pray for you or uh, or read you from uh, the Holy Scripture of Saren Ray, uh, I will I'll gladly gladly uh, uh, take you uh, to the nearest temple and, and give you the divine blessings. Mm, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, just for reference, so Tengu kind of just use gods as they please uh, when it's beneficial for them. So they learn about them all and then kind of pull it in when, when it's convenient. A, a very pragmatic view of, <laughs> of faith and worship. <laughs> so that's why he wants to learn uh, about yours, just in case he needs, he needs it in a time of need. Got it. Is it like the mummy? When when Benny has all of those charms and he's trying to get the mummy away from him. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Diego, do you happen to mind or could you tell us more about your your relationship with your sister and, and how maybe she got wrapped up in all of this or? Uh, well, I wish I knew how she got wrapped into this. When I was forced out from my home, it was actually because of my sister. She always wanted to be the number one, the better child, apparently. And to the point where when I was supposed to have finished my studies and become a guardian, she sabotaged it. How? Well... I was supposed to have uh, finished a ceremony, and before I could do that, she destroyed the cup that I was supposed to utilize for the ceremony. Um, it's much disgrace for my family, and so I had to, well, leave. So she destroys the cup, but you have to take the blame for it all and that's how you had to or that's how and why you had to leave your your everyone everyone behind yes i am well i was to be the next leader but uh clearly i lost the confidence of the people with that right like if you can't protect the cup how can you protect the the, the village that's yes, hard. my friend. Oh, that that is, unfortunately, the point of view that they took. So are you planning on uh, finding her and forgiving her or forgiving her? Well, I would like f to prevent her from doing any more harm. She has sought to do harm many, many times in many ways with individuals throughout our lifetime. So did she just like... Push it off the edge of the table. <laughs> Swat it off the table. <laughs> it seems very unusual behavior, but uh, not for a cat. No, actually, actually, she tossed it into a molten fire. Oh, she really broke it. I was gonna there say was she, no she went big. Around. Yes. Did did she push push it off the table into the molten fire? Look, I'm trying to make this cat thing work. <laughs> I have images in my head and I want to share them well but she uh, I, I, I do wish to rehabil rehabilitate her if possible but I recognize that that may not be possible do you think that she's acting on her own in all of this or that like she is actively desiring to bring back the Whispering Tyrant? Or is she just like doing her own thing and it happens to line up with what it is that the Whispering Way is attempting to accomplish? My friend, I think it is the latter. She has not shown the fortitude that should be used. 
to keep the people safe and secure. So I wonder how and why it is, like, I understand that the Whispering Way's objective is to revive or resurrect uh, the Whispering Tyrant. But, like, what do they get out of this? Like, that is why, is, why is it that we would want to, or why is it that they would want to, like, raise an undead king to, to rule over their, their empire or their, their kingdom? I mean, you see it all the time with despots and fascists, man. It's they're 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 just brainwashed to think that their way is right, and he's going to bring the good for them. I mean, that's what I would think. Uh, it's a it's a make Ustalov great again situation. <laughs> it's just starting with Ustalov. Muga. <laughs> Mugga. <laughs> Mugga. <laughs> I mean, when people think they're right, though, they just, I don't know, lose all reason and, and does, don't care who they destroy or or how, how bad it's going to be for them so long as it hurts somebody else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I'm, then it sounds like we just need to focus on stopping the Whispering Way then and just stop them at all costs because this is not necessarily going to be... No one is going to get out of this uh, intact if, if he gets raised. Agreed. Most of you would know just from your dealings with the Whispering Way or your own histories that the majority of the followers of the Whispering Way... <laughs> are necromancers and death cultists who believe that the undead is the way to continue living and gain more power. That's dark. (laughs) Well, true, and that follows along with Pepper's motives. She does want more power. I thought she was a necromancer. I was going to say, is she a necromancer? <laughs> Not a necromancer. The power aspect. She definitely wants power. Who's the older sibling? Is it you or Pepper? My friends, I am the older. However, she has never let me forget that she is around. Okay, but who's the favorite? Like, from your litter. <laughs> <laughs> Like, damn, bro got bullied by his little sister. <laughs> <laughs> totally. It's terrible. <laughs> Oregano it's, is the favorite. It's giving Zuko <laughs> Azula. <laughs> Nobody watched that Actually, last airbender? All right. No, yeah, totally did. <laughs> no. <laughs> not, the, or, uh, not the remake, though. We just keep it old school. I just like the movie. Uh, what movie? <laughs> <laughs> the one with the blue people. No. Because <laughs> that's the only movie. <laughs> exactly. All right. Did you get all your chatting done for the evening at the tavern? Or as much as you're going to get? I think we really learned a lot, you guys. <laughs> um, you, you never really told Yannicka where we are. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, Nico. We are in Ustalov. Um We're in the town of Ilmarsh. Look, I got a map, and she rolls out the same map that Gary's showing us. <laughs> cool. Oh, we are in Ilmarsh. Mm-hmm. It is in the. Do they have states or provinces? Ilmarsh is in. Uh, I mean, they do kind of have. I think there's states within yeah. Ustalov. We're in the state yeah, of Versex, Vers- in the Versex, country yeah. of Ustalov, in the land of Glo- Gol- Golarian. Gol- I don't know how to... Golaria? Golarian. Golarian. Um, Gary, how far is Absalom from here? Well, I so am I way away from home, or would yeah. I know this area? 3,000 so, miles away, the crow f- or the... Uh, as the crow flies. <laughs> as the um, hey, oh. Tengu flies. The, the Tengu flies. Or as the, por- as the portal opens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So 
I'll show you on the map. So you know where Ustalov is up here? Yep. Mm -hmm. Absalom, you scroll down into the inner sea. Is on oh, wow. This island. Oh, okay. I'm way away from home. You went from the inner sea up into Lake and Carthen. Okay. Yeah, so that portal took you a long way, Unico. Okay, but the map actually only shows 70 feet, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but each square is about... Let's see. <laughs> uh, each square is about 100 miles. <laughs> so is that 7,000 miles close. then? So, it's a long way. You travel yeah. a long way. Your little portal. Well, I just I just wondered if he would be um, familiar with the with the towns and stuff. So, but in that in that instance, I don't think he would be. Uh, you probably would have heard of Caliphas uh, in Ustalov. Okay, because it's the capital. The capital, yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you would know Ilmarsh as well. Got it. Perfect. Okay, cool. Just set in the scene. Mm -hmm. All right. So we all ready to set off to follow the whispering way to Caliphas? Sure. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> all right. And there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Uh, you could either uh, try to convince uh, Horace Croon to let him or to let you use the boat and sail across Avalon Bay. Uh Caliphas, or you could travel and you'd probably find horses and travel by horseback. Around the hey, room, around what the happened room. to that one horse? Oh, yeah. It's probably in town somewhere. <laughs> it's now the town horse. It's their mascot. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you say town horse? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody gets a ride. Uh... Hey, oh. <laughs> I expected the music to... I was going to say, Gary, <laughs> we had to... Damn it. Oh, no. That one? Did it. Yeah. There we go. Timely. <laughs> or is it more of a... Did you Ooh. say horse? <laughs> <laughs> also, didn't he rent that horse from somebody in town? <laughs> uh, you, oh yeah, that horse he did. Was from we, Thrushmore that y'all yeah. brought in, I believe. But he got killed, right? The guy you ran over. Yeah. Okay. He's yeah. The, he's the one that was that you found earlier. Yeah. He's dead, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess asking Horace. I mean, we could always just ask Horace and see how far he's willing to take us. Uh, to Caliphas, whether it's, you know, even just a trip around or just directly across to Caliphas. That would, I mean... We could tell him it's for science. It's true. Alright. So... Horus, you go talk to Horus uh, if that's the way you, that you want to try to travel. Um, he does offer to use the, the boat to, to sail... Um, he also offers, like, is there any uh, stops we need to make along the way? Uh, any uh, uh, along the way? Along like you... the way across uh, Avalon Bay? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, we, we could go to the, you know, we could go to Von Till first. They might have some uh, a market there that's not, you know, run by the people of Ilmarsh. Or we could just cool. go straight to Caliphas. I mean, that's your call. It's whatever you want to do. Before we also go, free to shop here before we go. Before we go, I think we should say goodbye to the only person in town that was nice to us. Oh, but I'm taking you there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jenny said that real loud too. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in the back, the cat is going. <laughs> 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 No, I meant like the the shopkeeps and innkeepers and all that stuff. You're part of the family. Oh, wait, which one? Which Plus, one? we know we know her pretty well. We should, we should probably buy for stuff from her. Yeah, it'll, it'll be good for the economy. Well, hello, friends. Welcome back. Hey, 
So, good news. The neighbors own no more. Really? Yeah. We we got them. Mission accomplished. All right. So what were they? Ugly. <laughs> they had these okay. weird like brains outside their heads. They were fish people. There was all sorts of ugly creatures. There was one thing that looked like a penis mantis. <laughs> penis mantis. That sounds interesting. It was gross. <laughs> He's like, you would think so, but it was <laughs> gross. <laughs> Did you bring me back any samples of anything to use in my potions? Yes. <laughs> and then I retconned some stuff that I picked up. Here's a beef turkey, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Probably uh, some of the fish gold and stuff that you picked up. Oh, yeah, the fish yes. gold. We got lots of fish gold. Um, <laughs> some ears. <laughs> Here's we, some dry blood from a mygo. There was... Um, Did we keep that brain of the mayor? No, oh yeah, we here's the mayor. You, you <laughs> I'm sorry, Gary. What did you here's say? The mayor. Uh, I was gonna say you left it down there, but you did. You stopped and went back and got it before you you left it. Yeah, yeah. So you're gonna need a new mayor, or <laughs> um, or body to hold this brain. Yes, and we've got some stuff that are valuable. Um, so if you can afford it, or we can trade or whatever. Um, we can do that, but we can do that a little bit later. I, we just wanted to come in and say that, that the, the neighbors are gone and that, um, and to say thank you for being so nice to us. Oh, um, that, that's no problem. I, I know how it feels to be an outsider here in Ilmarsh. The people here are very set in their ways. They, they don't, uh, they don't take kindly to those of us from other parts of the, the world. So what uh, exactly keeps you here? Well, uh, I I mostly came here because of the rare plants and things that are in the 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 forest here. Uh, they're things that I can't find at home. Uh, the the druid order that used to be here was you know they're good about creating these random sacred plants and things. So I came here to study those and uh, to also incorporate them into um, you know, my work. So if you ever get all the rare things and uh, plants and whatever and complete your work or get close enough to where you don't have to be here, I recommend not being here unless you're the oh, mayor. I'm out of here as soon as I can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, speaking of the, since there's no mayor, who do we talk to about the treasure that we were promised? Oh, he promised you treasure? Pretty sure. I have to go listen to the episode, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, we'll go with yes. Well, um, I would say talking to the deputy, but, uh, he's not really the nicest person to talk to. And I don't think he would believe you. I don't know. Uh, I you maybe talk to Horace Croon about it. He might have uh, some ways to get some funds for you. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna take, I guess, those thieves' tools, uh, those suction cups, um... <laughs> the nipple clamps, <laughs> all of the oh, things. Oh, that kind of store. <laughs> <laughs> well. Again, we, we just wanted to say goodbye and then um, uh, do a little trading. But we can, like, like I said, we can do that later. Um, if you're ever out of the country, maybe we'll see you. Yeah. Uh, well, um, tell you what, I'll give you a really good discount on the items you buy here to stock up along your way. Anything I can help you with. Uh... 
Also, you know, keep me informed of your travels and your adventures. Uh, here's my ethereal mail address. Perfect. <laughs> and here's mine. Don't pay attention. I, I, I got the handle when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> and more racist. <laughs> Uh, yeah, why is it why is it Tengu Hater eighty nine? Yeah, Nico just peeks over. He's like, "Wait, wait a minute!" <laughs> Look, no, I was Hatter. young. I made, I made I made hats for Tengu. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's it. Bye, yeah, girl. Best, best of luck on your travels. Uh, thanks for all that you have done here. Um, I'm sorry you're not going to get the big parade for stopping the the neighbors that you would in any other town. Um, but yeah. This town sucks. Yeah, people are pissed. They try to help out and people are mad at them. So, who are you? <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> who st- the fuck are you? <laughs> funny story. One of our companions died, and we found him, or he got oh, teleported no. into us. Oh, yes, oh, I'm not. Oh. I'm not here by my own volition. Which one died? Uh, oh, the ogre's not here. Not the ogre. The orc. The orc. The orc's not here. Now who's racist? <laughs> <laughs> ogre, or if they're so close. Yeah. So orc. sadly, we 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 lost Gruber. Um, Fighting this interplanar dimension thing. God. Like, we defeated a god. You defeated a god? It was a baby god, but yeah. It still counts. <laughs> <laughs> Here's wow. one of his tentacles. I forgot I had that. Pulls it, pulls it out from, like... The back of the pants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I can use this. Wash it first. <laughs> Just in the back of her pants. <laughs> she uses very big tongs to grab it so she doesn't have to touch it. With that, we will head out. Are we going to take the boat across? I think, we, yeah, we decided to take the boat. The other person that was nice to us that I totally forgot about, and then oh. very sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right to his face. I mean, this would be great for Thwip and Porkchop to get back out on the sea. And try or the lake, at least. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, y'all say goodbye to Jeline. Uh, you uh, get back with Horace. He's setting up the boat. Um, do y'all mention the fact that you were owed money? Sure, why not? No, I feel like we fine. should. That's fine. If you don't want, if you don't want the money, that's fine. I it can't hurt. <laughs> One last heist, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you tell Horace the, that you know Mayor Greedle promised you money, uh, but you know, he's dead. So, you can't get that. Um, so he says, oh, well, I've got money here on the ship. How much did he promise you? Wouldn't it five? Yeah, it's five. Yeah. <laughs> five five thousand. Pork chop. thousand simoleons. Each. Pork chop is so proud that you did not inflate the number. <laughs> like you used to do back in the old days. You'd be like, oh, uh, I think you said 15 is what you nor- would normally say, but... I was like, just caught me by surprise. That's the only reason. <laughs> he thought he was inflating the number. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, well, uh, 5,000. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've got that here on the ship. Um, I can just restock it from the town treasury. Uh, I've got the mayor's brain. That'll help me get in. <laughs> well, we just gave it to, <laughs> to this oh. shop. No, we didn't get the brain. We gave the tentacle. Okay, yeah, the tentacle. Leave the brain with me. I'll I'll use it to get into the treasury, and you know I'll, I'll get my money back that way. Okay. Since it's what it, it's owed to you, anyway. Well, then Jenny is very touched by this. She reaches into the front of her pants and pulls out <laughs> one of the tentacles. Oh, 
no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> What? They were souvenirs. <laughs> oh, and Suva, this, is, <laughs> this is something that you can study. It's from an extra planar uh, being, a baby god. Um, wash it first. It's called hentai. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm sure I can make something with this. Don't know what. But I'll, I'll think of something. As Diego turns his head, he goes, sushi. <laughs> <laughs> hey, better sushi than discovering that he has a new kink. Like, you know. <laughs> Slap. <laughs> this does give me the idea for a new sub subaqueous vessel. If I had one that had arms that extend off of it, I could use it to research things in the bottom of the lake. There you go. There you go. Hey, that idea's got to be worth something. My thanks. <laughs> uh, so with that, he does continue the journey across the lake. It does take about two days to get across. Because do, we, do we see Nathaniel? It's a big lake. Uh, if, you, if you call him. I mean, yeah. she's, uh, <laughs> yes, she does call him. Because she's, she's learned something about things with tentacle. They're pretty great. <laughs> Did she learn this after they were in the pants? <laughs> yes, because that, that was not her intention at all. She was bringing home gifts, and then I don't want to get Next gross with know. it. But... <laughs> and now we have an explicit rating again. Uh, <laughs> I said nothing about nothing. I hinted very heavily. You hint I. Watch it before you go. <laughs> uh... So yes, uh, you do see you do see Nathaniel, Nate the Eight, as they call him. I just say, "Bye, mijo. Don't eat people." And you see a one tentacle raise up and wave. <laughs> uh, but you do make it across and into Caliphas. Uh, Caliphas is very easy to spot as you are approaching land, as it is the capital city of Ustalav much larger city than you have been in in quite some time. You make it to the dock, say goodbye to Horace, uh, and start making your way into town. The docks for Caliphaz aren't like directly within like the town proper, so they're a little off to the side and you have to enter town from there. So you start uh, following the road into town. And as you do, the road narrows as it passes between two hillsides topped with skeletal trees looming to the east and west. Just ahead, a stone bridge spans a wide, fast-moving stream with stone sentinels and stag-antlered helms guarding each end. On the bridge, a headless figure astride a dark horse with flaming hooves stands within the middle of that bridge. You recognize the attire that he is wearing, the attire of one of the Dark Riders. Accompanying him, you do also see dire ghoul wolves. And the steed that this headless figure is riding is an eerie, horse-like creature whose skin is black as ink. Fire spurts from its hair and nostrils and its hooves spray sparks. And the rider speaks to you and says, I believe you have something that belongs to me. I'll see you next time. Oh! Probably one of those tentacles. I don't have any more. Little does he know, we got rid of